I'm going to show you how I fill and bleed bladder style and emulsion style shocks. At some point during your time in the hobby, you're going to have to fill shocks with oil. And there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. Some people don't care. They'll just go ahead and throw oil in there, throw them back on their car and go have fun. But that can affect the performance of the vehicle. If you put too much oil in, the shock will hydrolock. So it'll only allow the shock shaft to move in so much before it basically stops. If you don't put enough oil in, you can have air mixing with the oil and you're going to get inconsistent damping. What you really need to do is fill your shocks properly and then bleed them afterwards before you put them back on the vehicle. And I'm going to show you how to do that with bladder and emulsion style shocks, which are the two most common shocks you're going to find in the industry. This Proline Power Stroke shock is an example of a bladder style shock. And the bladder is this little piece right here that looks like a contact lens that's really milky. And this goes inside the shock cap. So it fits inside just like this. And what it's going to do once it's in there and settled is this gives somewhere for the oil to go when the shock shaft is compressed. So this bladder will compress, compress the air in the cap and it allows the shock shaft to move in and out freely without air mixing into the, into the shock oil, which gives it consistent damping. This bladder also doubles as a gasket. So it fits all the way around the outside diameter of the um, shock cap and it sits against the shock body and that seals it at the same time. The shocks on my TLR22 SCT are an example of an emulsion style shock. And you can tell that it's an emulsion style shock by the little screw right here. This is the bleeder hole for the shock and that screw with a little gasket seals it. Now an emulsion style shock mixes air and oil together and that's the one difference between that and a bladder style shock. The other difference between that and a bladder style shock is that there is no bladder to seal the cap and the shock body so these use an o-ring to do that job instead. Before you fill and bleed your shocks, you're going to need some way to hold on to them so that the air can have time to, you know, make its way out of the shock oil and all. And you don't want to hold on to it with your hands. You'll need some sort of shock stand or shock mount uh, to put them on so that way the oil and air can do their thing while you wait. Uh, this is an example of an old Ofna shock stand that I have. I've had this many years. It's been on many workbenches and pit benches and all that. And I've seen better days, but this is a great... Uh, a great example of what I'm talking about when it comes to shock stands. It has two different levels for different types of shocks and different holes for the body to sit in. Then you just put your shock in there and it holds it upright while the air and oil do its thing. Uh, if you don't want to buy a shock uh, stand or you don't have a shock stand, you could also use a vise. Now this isn't what I would use. This one's a little bit too small for the job, but it'll show you what I'm talking about. When I have my vise on my workbench, I open it up just enough so that the jaws can support the shock body when you put it in. And that's a perfectly fine shock stand. I do it all the time, especially at my shop, um, and it works perfectly. There's two things you need to remember when it comes to fluid for your shocks. One, make sure it's the right fluid for your shocks. Most shocks take silicone shock oil. Some shocks might take like a fork oil, like the large scale of, uh, vehicles and so on. Most shocks though, silicone shock oil. That's what you use for the shocks. If you use something else, it could degrade the O-rings, it might not work as well, uh, and, and the list goes on. The other thing you need to do is make sure you have the right weight oil for your vehicle. Uh, the manual itself is gonna tell you generally what your oil should be. Um, race vehicles have very specific shock oils that they use, so that'll be listed in the setup sheet or the, or the manual itself. Other vehicles, generally it's listed there, and most of the time, uh, ready to run vehicles like bashers are 30 weight. Um, you know, a trail truck might be a little bit different that might be thicker and so on. Uh, the monster trucks like the LMT is 25, but generally all around about 30 weight um, oil. Um, if you don't have the manual or you can't find a manual, go online. Just type in, you know, blah, 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 car manual. Uh, you'll most likely find a PDF of it. Go through that manual and it will tell you in there generally what you need, 30 weight, 40 weight, whatever it is. So make sure you go to your local hobby shop and pick up the correct oil for your shocks. Before I fill and bleed shocks, if the shock came with a spring on it or has a spring on it because I've been using it, uh, I remove the spring. So I remove the spring retainer and the spring itself. And what that does is it allows me to compress the shock shaft all the way to get the oil out and do the proper job. 
When I fill shock bodies, I generally fill them up about halfway. That way, when you move the shock piston through the oil and try to get the air out, there's less oil for it to go through. You can even go about a third of the way up the body. So what I'll do is, with this shock, for example, is we're going to fill it up with a little bit of shock oil. and We'll go about halfway up the body, and then I'll stop. Now, don't forget, be careful when you're squeezing that tube of shock oil. Don't go crazy, because if you squeeze too hard, it's just going to shoot oil all over the place. We're not in a race here. You just need to fill the shock body halfway with the fluid. Now that we have the shock body filled with oil about halfway, we're going to push in the shock shaft. And what that's going to do is it's going to push the shock piston through the oil that's in the shock body, allowing it to get below the piston. And that'll also help the air from under the piston to come out. So you're going to push it in just until you get about to the level of your oil in the shock body to get the oil underneath the piston. And then you'll slowly extend the shock shaft to pull the piston back through the oil and let the air that's trapped underneath it out. When you pull that shock shaft out though, don't do it too fast because if you do, you're just gonna shoot shock oil everywhere. So just take your time, pull it back slowly to get the piston back through the oil. And then when you're done with that, put it in a shock stand and let it sit to allow the air to come out of the oil. So I give it about 15 minutes just to be safe. All right, so now that the shock body's full, I'm gonna show you how I bleed uh, bladder style shocks first. Bladder style shocks bleed different from emulsion style, don't forget, so there, we'll, we'll show you that in a second. So this is a bleeder style, or a bladder style, sorry. Uh, most shocks have a bleeder hole on the side of the shock cap. And that's good, it makes things a lot easier when you're bleeding a shock. Uh, so what I do is I make sure that that hole is upright, put the cap on the shock body without spilling too much oil. Now, by the way, I normally have a paper towel around the shock right now to keep all the oil from going all over the place and all over my hands, but I want you to be able to see what's going on here. So we're not gonna, we're not going to do that today. So what I do is I just put the cap on just enough, uh, maybe about halfway. You can see there's already air and oil coming out of that bleeder hole. And then what I'll do with the cap in the upright position in the shock at a 45 degree angle so that the air and everything can make its way to that hole, just slowly compress the shock shaft. And you can see the oils and air is going to come out of that bleeder hole. Go slow. There's no reason to rush. You know, we're going to compress it and let the oil come out. And once it's fully compressed, I let it sit for a couple seconds just to let the oil do its thing. You know, um, again, take your time. There's no reason to rush. And then after I give it a couple seconds of time to kind of finish doing its thing, we tighten the shock body. And you can see there's still more air coming out while I'm holding the shock shaft fully uh, compressed. Tighten the shock. And then once it's tight, we have a perfectly bled shock. Now it's smooth, no air bubbles, no rebound. This is basically a dead shock, which is what I like to have. I don't want the shock to be acting on the suspension. I look for a dead shock. If you uh, have a shock that's um, you know pushing out the shock shaft, then there's probably a little bit too much oil in. Just loosen the shock cap a little bit and then bleed a little more oil and air out if you can, um, and then you should be good to go. But that's how you do it. So that's the basics of bleeding an emulsion, or sorry, a bladder style shock. Now let's do the emulsion. Now I'll show you how I bleed emulsion style shocks um, using a shock off a of Losi LMT. Uh, for those who don't know and or have shocks from an LMT, you can actually build them bladder style or emulsion style. They come from the factory bladder style. So if you wanna do an emulsion style shock, you'll ditch the bladder, get the O-ring, uh, put it on the shock cap or a shock body, sorry. And then that'll seal the shock cap um, and shock body. Uh, and the other thing you're going to do before you bleed anything is you're going to remove the bleeder screw from the hole on the top of the shock cap. That'll give the air and oil a place to go when you compress the shock. So now, kind of similar to the bladder style shock, we're going to put the cap on, but this time we're going to tighten it all the way. So you can put the cap on, tighten it all the way, and again, I like to make sure that the hole is upright, shocks at a 45 degree angle. And then, just like before, we're going to slowly compress the shock shaft, and you'll see the oil coming out the hole. So just take your time, slowly compress it, and then the shock oil is going to come out. Once that happens, hold the shock shaft in place, keep it compressed, and then you're going to just take your bleeder screw, put it in the hole if you can find it, tighten it down. That's now sealed and you're good to go.
So that's how I bleed bladder and emulsion style shocks. I've been doing it that way for a zillion years. I do it on my race cars, on my bashers, everything and anything that has a shock, that's how I bleed emulsion and bladder style shocks. You really just need to do a couple things when you're doing it. Take your time, make sure you get the right shock oil for the shock, and make sure you use the right weight oil for the shock. Follow the directions that I gave you and you'll be just fine.